Well, hello and welcome to this edition of the EV Revolution Show. My name is Kenneth Bocor, your host for this edition. Well, I've got a few stories to cover to keep you up to date with what's going on in the EV marketplace. Thanks very much for taking the time out of your schedules to watch me. I appreciate it. So let me get going right into today's stories. First story has to do with a company called eMobility Consultancy P3 Automotive. And they publish, uh, they've published a new edition of what they call the P3 Charging Index. Now, the aim of the charging index is to create a reproducible benchmark and to draw attention to how important the combination of high charging performance and low power consumption is for an EV. Now, the P3 Index benchmarks and sets a number of one, which represents an ideal road trip situation where the EV can accept enough electri electric energy let's say for a 300 kilometer range in about 20 minutes. Now vehicles with an index of less than 0.5 are not listed because what they say, quote, usability over long distances requires greater effort, unquote. So for example, neither the Volvo XC40 Recharge or the Renault Zoe or the Opel Corsa E are to be found on their index. Now, let me assure you folks that this does not mean that these vehicles cannot be taken for long road trips. Absolutely they can. It just means that these and some others will take longer to charge to give you 300 kilometers range, which would be more than 20 minutes. And as you have heard me say many times, the sweet spot for all electric charging would be to get a good amount of range back, let's say around 200 miles or 300 kilometers or so, in a time of less than 30 minutes, closer to 15 minutes being idea. This would bring the charging experience to consumers to a much closer situation that we see today by refueling at a gas station. So what this data provided by P3 indicates are the vehicles that have the ability to meet or come close to the 20 minutes to gain back 300 kilometers, about 186 miles of range. You may hear people, including me, talk about this in terms of charging curve of an EV. And basically, the more power that an EV can pull for the longest time will result in a faster charge. So it's no surprise then to see all electric cars in the top 10 of the P3 charging index that can charge at an average rate of over 100 kilowatts. The top EVs on this index are, not surprisingly, really, the new Mercedes-Benz EQS 580, Tesla Model 3 Long Range, and the VW ID3. Now, it's great to see the lower-cost VW offering do so well, as many of the top 10 vehicles on this index are very expensive vehicles. The other observation is that most of these are not 800 volt architecture vehicles. So they do pretty well with the current standard of 400V. Now with 800V moving to become what I think eventually will be the new standard over time, we will see charging times get even better so that, they're clo that they close the gap on the refueling experience and take away the charging barrier to EV adoption. My next story talks about some bright spots for the North American EV industry. General Motors has announced that it will invest $1 billion U.S. dollars in the expansion of its plant in Ramos, Arispe, Mexico. Initially, battery packs and electric motors will be assembled there, followed by two electric Chevrolet SUVs starting in 2023. This would be the fifth GM plant where the company builds or plans to build electric cars. Now, on the same note, Toyota has announced investments of $803 million U.S. and 1,400 new jobs in its Princeton car plant in the, United, in the U.S. state of Indiana to prepare for the production of two new electrified SUVs. And I've talked about that on previous shows. Now, one of the two three-row SUVs is destined for the Toyota brand and the other for Lexus. Toyota is not yet giving further details on the type of electrification and the vehicles are to be announced, of, quote, of course, at a later date. Now, it's great to see more investments from the major OEMs into the electrification space, which will result in more vehicle adopt options coming to the marketplace, as well as new job growth and economic boosts. Now, next story, following the growth trends of automakers pledging to go all electric, Honda 
is hoping to do the same. Thank goodness for that. Although slightly lower than most, of course. Now, the Japanese automaker announced that it hopes to sell only battery electric and fuel cell electric vehicles globally by 2040. Honda is planning a phased approach to reach this target. They say by 2030, they want 40% of their sales to be electrified in their major markets and followed by 80% in 2035 before 100% globally in 2040. The automaker said the first two large size SUVs will launch in the 2024 model year in North America, and the vehicles will be based on their completely new EV platform, what they call E Architecture. One will be badged as a Honda, with the other being, of course, under its sister brand Acura. Both will be equipped with GM's Altium battery pack. Currently, Honda has the Honda E in Japan and Europe, and the uh, plug-in hybrid electric vehicle Clarity for North America. Now, I, for one, welcome Honda into the EV fold and feel that it is better late than never for them. And last OEM story today is about Volkswagen. Just a small announcement. They've presented the first all-wheel drive model in their ID family. It's the sporty GTX model, and it's to be launched on the market this summer and it is Volkswagen's first, as I mentioned, all-wheel drive electric vehicle. The ID4 GTX will have a system output of 220 kilowatts, be able to drive up to 180 kilometers per hour, and accelerate to 100 kilometers per hour in about 6.2 seconds. It also relies on the 77 kilowatt hour battery pack, about which is 800, uh, sorry, which is 82 kilowatt hour gross. Volkswagen gives a WLTP range of 480 kilometers. The DC charging power is also at 125 kilowatts and three phase AC charger with 11 kilowatts is installed. And as I mentioned earlier, they do quite well on the charging curve. There are some cosmetic exterior appearance changes over the regular ID4 models, as well as suspension and chassis details. Now the ID4 GTX is scheduled for market launch in Europe in the summer of 2021, so very soon. For pricing, in Germany, it's been announced that the base price is just over 50,000 euros before any incentives. So great to see VW add another model to the ID4 lineup. All right, so that's it for the news stories, but I do have a mailbag that uh, I got sent in. Hey, finally, I haven't had one of those for a while. So I do want to bring that up. I want to thank Rick. Um, Rick hasn't told me where he's from. Sorry, he's Canadian here, I believe, in Ontario. Thanks, Rick, for sending me the email. And he just basically asked me about the used EV market and if I had any thoughts or wanted to talk a little bit about that. So I thought that this would be a good mailbag question. So really the answer, Rick, is short. I think that there is very much a growing used EV market and there's a lot of great deals out there. Now, used EVs have become more popular initially in Europe. I remember going out to the UK three years ago, four years ago, and they were already getting busy. And I have friends, uh, shout out to my friends in the UK that run businesses selling used EVs and they're doing quite well. In fact, they have a hard time finding inventory to sell because it's such a, a high um, uh, demand market. And as we get more EVs now that are coming into the market over the last few years and moving forward, we'll start to see more used EVs hit the market. Because again, five, six years ago, there were only a few models that were out there. And now over, of course, many years, we've seen more come out. So that market is growing. And there are uh, specific dealers in some cases that just focus on used EVs and all over the place, not just here in Ontario, but in the U.S. and other countries. You can, you can go and look for them. So I think it's a great idea because it's giving second life to these EVs that might have some battery degradation. Typically, EVs are, are fairly solid as far as the rest of the components in the vehicles go. And most EVs have very solid battery packs, so they might have some degradation over five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten years, whatever it is. But there certainly could be enough life in them for somebody to make a choice like a second vehicle or something that's just doing short commuting. And you can get some really good savings because, again, you're buying a used vehicle. And there are some places that do offer used EV incentives, so you'll have to check your local areas. There's a private company here in Toronto that's offering that for some used EVs. So, you know, sometimes you can get additional savings. So I think it's a great idea if somebody is interested in an EV, but they're not sure if they want, want to take the plunge into new 
The used EV is a great marketplace and there's lots of people that can help you. So go check it out. Well, that's it for this edition of the EV Revolution Show. Thanks very much for tuning in. I appreciate you taking the time. Of course, watching on YouTube and subscribing. If you haven't subscribed, please do. You can click that bell icon and get notified of episodes as they come out as well. So it's much appreciated as I continue to slowly try to grow my subscription base. Thank you very much for that. And of course, my Patreon supporters, you know who you are. I'm always, always, always very humbled about that. If you're interested in supporting me on Patreon, you know, a dollar a month, whatever you want to, to pitch in for that will help me. So I do appreciate that. If you're interested, see the link below and check it out. Of course, I'm, my PSA is going to continue until COVID, <laughs> until we're past this, which sounds like it's gonna be a while yet. Continue to stay safe, follow your local public health guidelines, get your vaccine you haven't got it yet and you're eligible, please go out and make an appointment and get it wherever you live and keep your ears and eyes on the EV marketplace. So much going on, as I say, each and every week. I look at dozens and dozens of stories and I just pick a few that I think are important to tell you folks, but there's so much more going on. I just can't tell you them all. So continue to watch that. And again, until we meet again on my next episode, please, everybody stay safe. And I will see you when I see you then. Take care. Bye-bye.